Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures, and I'm sitting here on a wet and rare rainy day in Southern California, and you know what the best cure for weather like this is, wherever you are in the world, it's printing and building more miniatures, and it's just a statistical fact, I mean, honestly. So, I was busy because recently Titan Forge went off the deep end and put out a whole ton of really nice looking marauder barbarian types and I was like I have got to get some of this stuff printed and the first one that caught my eye was I believe this guy was called the Cairn Warlord or Warmonger or Fighter or something and he was actually offered up as a freebie at the time that Titan Forge was offering this set and he was just a big dude impressive looking dude considering here is a regular sized human. These are scaled at 32 millimeters, something to be aware of. He is not gonna be fitting on a regular sized base. He's gonna need a 40 for sure. And coincidentally, he looked really great with a lot of what uh, Artisan Guild was putting out. Very similarly themed barbarians, but we'll save those for another day. I've put a ton of Artisan Guild stuff off to the side and I've gotta show it off. And so, besides that guy, then I started looking more in depth at what was being offered for this month. And they had a whole set, and I've got a baggie here because I had all the parts, of modular fighters. And I was like, oh, I've got to print me some of those. Because that's what I do. I talk to myself all the time when I'm doing these things. Um, but very barbarian-ish, very caveman-like, lots of detail. This is just one of the generic modular bodies. There were both male and female modular fighters available. I think I only printed most of the male bodies. And another interesting thing, in addition to that, oh, here's one of the champion's heads naturally wearing a skull. Do need to clean up a little bit still there, but that's okay. Uh, they had a selection of either very rudimentary bone and rock based weapons or scavenged bits such as swords and axes if you wanted to go that route so a, a nice variety there also as well as shields there's more traditional hide ones wooden ones we have the big nasty maul made out of bone with some reinforced metal bits there for, I think he's the warmonger. But, uh, yeah, so I started printing all this stuff and I couldn't resist. But the real impressive pieces, oh, and also they had some nice little character models. This is the head huntress. Getting her printed off and not breaking everything was a challenge and a half. Some of these things, I'm not sure as I break it right now, if they're supposed to be little dangly bits, of which she's got plenty hanging off of her clothes there, or if that's just extra supports that I didn't do a good job of removing. It's hard to say. And Oh, I was going to say. So then they had a bunch of mounted options as well, including a whole slew of cavalry guys. But then I saw this dude... Looking all like Conan as uh, they're headed through the procession and the, the Basil Pompadouris music starts playing in my head. But he had this big, impressive, I don't know, some kind of like place to scene mammal. I've got his horn here off camera. He's got these nice banners that are going to go on his back with our totally not Conan Barbarian going to be sitting up there. He's actually supposed to sit on the saddle which is attached to the flags. And here's a nice big horn. I can't remember the name. I'll go ask my kid. He probably knows. But I still haven't gotten to the best thing. I keep getting distracted as I'm rambling on about everything that was in this release. And I didn't even print everything. That's what's crazy. No, the best part was the Cairn Queen. Who is wearing animal skins and barefoot and fighting with a giant serrated bone whip blade but that still isn't the coolest what's coolest is her mount and if you haven't seen it in any of the pictures that titan forge had up everywhere it's this guy 
Yes, we had a very impressive looking theropod that unfortunately I did not print correctly. Look at that, I messed up his feathers, but those are okay. He's got some size to him, that's just the head. Here is the body, and you guys should know me by now. Anytime I have a good excuse for a massive multi-part model that's actually going to be used in tabletop games, I'm all over it. The tail. Now, the tail is an interesting choice, if I can get the word interesting out of my mouth correctly. I'm kind of surprised it's got these bone growths coming out. I don't know if those were inserted by the tribes people or if they were grown on there. And there's obviously a hollow hole. Whether or not I fill that is entirely debatable. And then there's his big armored feet. Now, my first thought when I saw this, this is a great proxy. Um, Apex Queen... Apex Predator, whatever it's called, in Conquest for the Wadroon. You know me, um, I'm always looking for an excuse to have big, giant, fantasy-themed dinosaurs. Uh, I've got my my little WizKids Deep Cuts uh, Greymon painted Allosaur here, always in the line, waiting to steal the limelight away. But yeah, I, I think he's going to be kind of intimidated by this thing. Absolutely massive beast, and he has this cool little, I don't know, display cage slash saddle that the queen's supposed to stand on um honestly i mean look at the back other than the fact of you have that indentation of where the saddle bit's supposed to go you could totally get away with mounting just about anything on this sucker and he's gonna look big and he's gonna look impressive now as I recall, I don't know if there was a base included for him. At least I haven't printed any, and we're going to find out real fast if his feet are flat enough. But I would imagine, you know, if you're modeling something of this size anyway, you probably have the capability of, or the resources, to put him on something big and impressive as well. So I'm going to grab all these folks here, and we're going to get everything all glued together. We're going to put some of these modular guys together. I've printed way too many weapons and bits for them, as is always the case. But, I mean, I'm really, really looking forward to getting this sucker all built up. So uh, sit tight while I gleefully get this bad boy glued together, and hopefully we'll see how he turns out in just a sec. All right, we've got some of our tribesmen from the Badlands all put together here. Came out pretty decent. And the more I look at them, the more I think that it might be kind of fun to take the parts from the Wakaturu tribe, which was a previous release from Titan Forge, and actually try mixing and matching the parts together. Obviously, these have a very white Anglo uh, looking style to their facial features, but I think with some of the heads from the Wakaturu tribe, you can totally have a mixed ethnicity for your people of the Badlands, which would be kind of fun. Plus, they have these cool champion bone helmets. And like I said earlier, there are both the male and female versions of all the tribe's people as well. So something there to keep in mind. A bit more primitive looking figure. And also of interest might be grabbing some of the weapons from the Wakaturu and using some of those. The Head Huntress. I dig her. I said it again. I gotta stop doing that. The sparkle truck keeps giving me a hard time. I keep saying that. And the big bad bruiser type dude. It barely fits on a 40 millimeter base. Speaking of the Wakaturu, I have the one I painted recently here. They look like they could be friends. I mean, they're both wearing enough ornamental bits and you know, I'm I'm kind of thinking maybe I'll paint this tribe up in similar colors. Maybe they can all hang out. Or they can fight with each other. That's always an option. Here we have... I can't remember the name of this specific animal, but it came in pretty nice. I like the flags on the back and the cocky, arrogant, warlord, leader type dude sitting here just chilling. Enjoying the view. Listening to the Conan soundtrack as he saunters into town. But really, this is all just basically a warm-up for the real star of the show, which is the mount for the queen. And I don't even know where I put the queen, but... Yeah, this big bad boy, 
Let's see if I can get it a little bit better there. Zoomed out so you can see he is very front heavy. I've got him on a monstrous cavalry base from Mantic for some reason. I must have been working on one. Uh, but you can see he barely, barely fits on that very long body with the tail and the head. Yeah, you just want to topple over, don't you? So the queen is supposed to just plop herself up on top right here. Here is the queen with her crazy whip, like something out of Brotherhood of the Wolves, which is always a fun movie to reference. But then I noticed afterwards that her hand totally has a print error. They're going to have to put like a glob of green stuff if I do end up using her right there so that she can be her whole self again. You can't even see her when she's up there. There's no real special spot for her to stand, which then started me thinking, well... If that's the case, then what's stopping me from gluing just about anything up there, or for that matter, maybe I should put some kind of like little perch so it's flat on top, and then that way I could just stick whoever the hell I feel like putting up there. I mean, I could just put like a plank or something like that, and then, you know, voila, now it's an orc warlord mount. Or maybe it's a matriarch queen from Conquest, or maybe one of the Avatara have taken it over. I don't know. I'm really tempted to put something up there. Uh, very makeshift ramshackle. I mean, it's ramshackle looking enough with all the pelts and stitched together leather that I don't think that's going to be much of an issue for them. Uh, Part-wise, everything went together nice and smoothly. You can see where obviously some of the seams are. If I had the need of a basic UV light, uh, I would probably go ahead and get that and try sticking some resin to close up those seams. But since we live in sunny California, I'm just going to go stick it outside and it'll be done in a day anyways. But yeah, I mean, obviously it's not the most uh, historically accurate or scientifically accurate historically uh, theropod out there on the market. I'm not sure still what's going on with those tailbones, whether they were attached by the tribes people or if they are natural and organic for this guy because they don't really match the scalage of the scoots on the back of our friend here or his little feathers or the fact that I had the failure right there too which kind of bugs me but that's not a big deal I mean overall I think you can use this thing for just about anything anything that requires a giant dinosaur to be mounted Another of the Titan Forge. This is from one of their earlier Barbarian releases. But I think this figure works just as well. I might mix and match some of their parts in here as well. They're more in the, the furs than these guys. But given the sheer variety of modular unit types that Titan Forge has put out at this point, I mean, you could come up with some unique looking units just with the figures that they've released at this point and i think that's a really cool thing uh but honestly if, if you haven't had a chance to check out any of titan forge's stuff i'm i'm honestly kind of shocked and surprised that that's the case because i mean they've they've put out tons of it um and i mean they were one of the first to really jump all in and embrace the 3d printing they were the first uh, patreon i think i ended up subscribing to maybe within a day of artisan guilds as well I mean, I saw Artisan Guild's Kickstarter when that first happened. But anyway, uh, if you haven't had a chance, I got to say, this is one of those like top five Patreons that every month you're going to get a lot of bang for your buck. And if you continue to subscribe to it, I think you're going to end up with all sorts of files. If you really want to kit bash and customize, you can do it to your heart's content. So like I said, we'll have those links down below. And if you're in the market for a whole bunch of giant dinosaurs, I think... They've got you covered at this point. With that said, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures saying thanks for watching, and we will see you back here soon. Bye bye.